Shalom, brothers and sisters. We're going to open today with a scripture read to us by James Piper, and that is going to be Jerem 1, 24 through 29, RAV, which would be 1, 11 through 12, OPV. And we'll proceed from there. James? Hello, everybody. I'm James Piper. I was asked to uh, read from the Book of Mormon today. Jerem chapter 1, verse 24 through 29. It reads, Wherefore, the prophets and the priests and the teachers did labor diligently, exhorting with all long suffering the people to diligence, teaching the law of Moses and the intent for which it was given, persuading them to look forward unto the Messiah and believe in him to come as though he already was. And after this manner did they teach them. And it came to pass that by so doing, they kept them from being destroyed upon the face of the land. For they did prick their hearts to the word, continually stirring them up unto repentance. Thank you for that. We are now going to move into the prayer requests. It has been a rather rough week for some of us. Um, I'm going to start with myself. I discovered that one of the medicines that the doctors had me on was hurting my pancreas. And while the blood work came back that I don't have pancreatitis, I still have a damaged or injured pancreas that is still healing. So I, for one, would definitely appreciate your prayers. There are other brothers and sisters that have put on, mentioned, submitted prayer requests because they also are under the weather for various reasons, ranging from illness to injuries and even mental anguish. So please pray for the health and the well-being of the saints. And once again, seems like, like this is just a daily occurrence at this point. We are struggling with some political ter turmoil, a number of different things in, our, in the United States and around the world. So please pray for peace that we can find, I don't know if middle ground is the right word, because certain people are wanting to oppress and other people are not wanting to be oppressed. But please pray that we'll be able to find a way to resolve differences and allow people to both enjoy their free agency and seek morality, seek the moral high ground. There's also... Um, a couple of people I'm talking to right now that are struggling with some severe temptations that they're having a hard time overcoming. They're not, they're not giving in to these temptations, but they feel very pressured by Satan. And I feel it's important that we, as saints, pray for one another because we know that this, this battle is happening constantly. We, we need to ensure that we don't get so consumed by our own battles that we forget the struggles of our brothers and sisters in Christ. So, please pray for the spiritual well-being of the saints on the earth also. At this time, I'm going to pause for a moment so that if you would like, you may stop the video and give an opening prayer or say an opening prayer where you are, sing a hymn, and then we will move forward from there. Now is our moment of unity. I am going to read the Shema first in Hebrew and then in English, and then I'm going to pause for a moment so that all those that desire to do so may say the Shema as one, as 
a fellowship together. Shema Yisrael, Yavah Elohenu, Yavah Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yavah is our God, our Elohim. Yavah is united. Yavah is unity. I would once again ask, we had a couple people reach out and say that they would like to participate. And we did actually receive a message. We're going to share it as the Thursday thought this week. But I would ask that those of you that feel impressed by the Spirit and have a message or something to share, please do so. We have the Thursday thought for a bit more deeper thoughts and messages and testimonies. And then we have the Sunday service for all testimonies, spiritual messages, prayers. We would like to hear from you. Today's message is based on Jerem 1, 24-29 REV, 111-12 OPV as Brother James read earlier, and I'm going to share a brief message on this topic. Between COVID, the political issues we're having all over the world, the wars we're having all over the world, and just the selfishness, greed, and egotism that we're suffering from. I know it feels like we're living in the times of Sodom and Gomorrah, where, as we know from the prophet Ezekiel, their sin was greed, selfishness, their unwillingness to help others. It's interesting, I was reading in the book of the Law of the Lord, where James Strang puts his notes in saying that Children don't respect their elders anymore. We're, we're living in a world where people are loving less and caring less. I'm paraphrasing him here. And everything he was saying sounds exactly like the things people say today. And so because of that, it's hard for me to believe that the world is much different than it was in the mid-1800s or even in the time of Christ. Pride and egoism have always been a problem. And when we read the scripture in the book of Jerem, it talks about the prophets and priests and teachers laboring with all diligence to teach the law, the law of Moses, the commandments of God. But more importantly, for me, the focus of this isn't the law itself, because as we know, the law of Moses has been replaced by the law of Christ, where we give a broken heart and contrite spirit. It says the, that they were teaching the intent for which it was given. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today, is that intent. I, I recently had to report a Facebook group because I made a comment about loving one another. I shared an image of Jesus playing with sheep that were dressed with the rainbow pride colors and the trans colors and another um, LGBTQ type flag color that I'm unfamiliar with. I'm not sure which what the what that flag represents. But it doesn't matter because Jesus accepts everyone. And they immediately started talking about sexualizing children, five and eight years old. It was very disturbing very disturbing. I ended up blocking them. And I know that these brothers in their heart, these brothers are Latter-day Saints. They believe themselves to be faithful to the gospel, and I have no reason to doubt that. In their hearts, because of the fact that they have politicized their religion, they 
are attacking other people instead of looking inwardly for intent. And I'm not saying this to judge them. I'm saying this because I do it too. I look out in the world and I see the things that I don't like about myself. But instead of internalizing it, I also, well, blame people for doing bad things. When I see all the selfishness and pride and greed in the world, I'm not seeing anything more than the selfishness, greed, and pride that I have in my own heart. Through Christ, I am perfect, but that doesn't make me magically a perfect person. Many of the people I'm talking to have been ordained as ministers. We've been set apart, and therefore it is our duty to labor diligently, exhorting with long-suffering to teach the commandments of God. What I hope to do personally, because I know that I don't do the best job of this, but what I hope to do is focus on the intent, not the words, not the strict line of commandments, or even my understanding of the commandments. What I hope to teach is the intent. And we know what the intent is based on the teachings of Jesus Christ in the New Testament and in 3 Nephi. He said very clearly, the two greatest commandments are love God and love your neighbor. And if you want to be perfect, love your enemy. I've talked about this many times. That has to be our intent as ministers as we reach out to people. We don't need to shame people. We don't need to point out their flaws. Everyone has a long time. There are nine people living in this house. My wife and I have seven children. And yet, there are still times when I get to be alone. There are times when everyone's asleep. There are times when I'm alone in the car. And at those times, thoughts come into my head, just like they do everyone else's. Satan tries to tell me all the things I could be doing better. And God tries to remind me of the intent of my heart. Not what I do, but why I do. I know I've offended a lot of people in my lifetime because I'm alive and I exist and it's something that we as human beings do. Even Jesus offended people. That's why God judges us based on our intent rather than our actions. I've shared many stories over the years of times when I was technically doing the right thing because I was following the letter of the law and God would come to me and say, but what's your intent? What's your reasoning? Why are you doing this? And that was my call to Teshuva. At the end of the verse, verses, I should say, it says, continuing stirring them up to repentance. That's an English translation. I would replace repentance with Teshuvah, the Hebrew term. Because when we say in English, I'm going to call you to repentance, the connotation normally derived from that is, I'm going to call you to do what I think you should be doing, not what you want to do. And that's not what repentance is about. A better translation of the scripture would be continually stirring them up to return to Teshuva. And how do we come back to God? Because we don't go anywhere, you know. I, I know growing up as a kid, I always thought that that meant going to church. You know, you want to repent, okay, well, you got to go to church. You want to return, you got to return to going back to church. Even as a young man and a young adult, I would go on splits with missionaries saying, come back, come back, come back. But it doesn't matter where you go. And that's the thing that it took me a long time to learn, but I finally have understood. 
What matters is where your heart is. Bring your heart back to God. Bring your intentions back to God. And I know the famous saying, the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. And it's not wrong. And I think that's the difference between calling people to repentance and calling people to Teshuvah. People have asked me, you know, why do you use these Hebrew terms? It's simple because I'm trying to change the understanding, the intent of the message. As Christians, and this is something I learned doing missionary work for the Salt Lake City Church. As Christians, we use the same words, but we have a different language. Depending on what sect we belong to, what church, what denomination, what culture we're in, the words change meaning. The only way in my mind to fix this is to travel back in time and grab the word that's not being used anymore, Teshuvah. Because then people have to stop and ask, well, what does this mean? How do I define this? And instead of saying the same things and meaning something different, my prayer is that we can come together under a new understanding of an old word. Now, obviously, the problem with this is that 100 years from now, people, if, if this catches on, people will start using Teshuvah the same way they use repentance today. And, and when I say that, I mean there'll be different meanings for that term also. And then we'll, we may have to return back to the word Teshuvah. But that's just it. God doesn't change because it's the intention that matters, but because we as human beings are constantly changing and evolving. The wording may change. The actions may change. If God never changes, why don't we sacrifice animals anymore? God didn't change because the intent behind the sacrifice of the animals is still there in Christianity today the broken heart and the contrite spirit. So those out there that are listening, that have been called to the ministry, I would encourage you to cry Teshiva to the people. Not through condemning, not through condemning anyone wrong and fastest in the wrong syllable there but by loving others by being the example through your intentions if I have offended you please know that I am truly sorry and that was never my intent I am a sarcastic person with a dry sense of humor but the most important word in that excuse that I just made is, I'm a person. I'm no one special. So I hope that when you see me, you can look past my flaws to the intent of my heart. And know that I love each and every one of you very much. And that no matter what you do, I'm never going to go away. So that's the intent of my heart. And that's the message I would like to share with you today. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's word, the sacrament, ministry, 
Outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him, and keep His commandments which He hath given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. Thank you for joining us to worship today. I'm going to close the day with a scripture and a, a short prayer. Above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Colossians 3, 14-15 Let's pray. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time. In thanks for the sacrifice of your son, in thanks for the prophets and prophetesses, teachers, and all those that you have called to do your work throughout the ages. The examples that they've set for us and the message that they have shared. For although their words may be different, the message is always the same. Love God and love one another. We pray that your spirit will be with us this day and always to help us to speak spirit to spirit one to another in love and in fellowship and in righteousness. That the works of our hands will be done as we are moved through the grace of your son, Jesus Christ. that the poor will be fed, the homeless will be sheltered, those that are needing the physical and then the spiritual. I pray that those in need, those are seeking, that they shall find, and that those of us that have our hands out to those in need that we will have the strength and capacity to grab a hold of these brothers and sisters and cling tightly to the rod as we help them in Teshiva grow closer to thee. We know that there is pain and there is suffering in this world, just as the scriptures say, will be, and we do look forward to the coming of your son just as those in the Old Testament and the first, first two-thirds of the Book of Mormon were looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, we today look forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And though we do not know when it will be, We do look forward to the day when the heavens shall be brought down upon the earth and that peace shall reign and love shall abide one to another. 
And until that day, please let your line, please let your light shine forth through us to help heal this creation. Help change our hearts that our intentions will be pure. We will know and we will understand the things that we need to do to proclaim, to proclaim your word and to build up your church. And when I say your church, I do not mean the organizations of man. I mean the body of Christ that is every living soul that has been born again in the name of your Son. Again, we thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for all the prayers of the saints. We thank you for all of the works that have been done in your name because we know that these have only been done as men and women have been moved by your spirit to accomplish your works. We thank you for the technologies available to us to allow us to minister and to fellowship one with another all over the world. And we ask you to please help us to battle the war against loneliness that is beseeching the earth right now. Help us come out of our shells and participate in your works, that your will be done in all things, and that the heavens will be brought down, that your work will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. These things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, so mote it be. Amen. Again, thank you for being with us this day. It is my prayer that these messages and these services do truly serve you. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless.